Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie, I am Knit California here on YouTube and also over on Instagram. This is episode 19, and today we're doing a special episode that's a combo what's in my stash and project planning. One of the biggest questions that I get when I talk about yarns that I like or patterns that I like is do I buy the yarn first or do I buy the pattern first? And I think this is such a which came first, the chicken or the egg question for probably almost every knitter and crocheter out there. Um, and to be honest, I do both. I really, really, really try to have patterns picked out for yarns before I buy them, but it doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes I see a beautiful hand-dyed yarn from one of my favorite dyers and I buy it without a project in mind. Um, I feel like I have kind of developed a system at this point to figure out how much yarn to buy for certain types of projects. Um, and I know that is another question that, in general, gets asked frequently, is if, you're, if you are going to be buying yarn without a project in mind, how do you know how much to buy? And how do you know what type of yarn to buy? And I feel like I have kind of made some decisions for myself um, to make that a little bit easier, but this really depends on a bunch of different factors. I have made a list <laughs> that I would like to share with you, um, as well as taking some notes so that I could make sure that I share everything correctly um, in this podcast. But. This is kind of what I have figured out for myself um, or the way that I've been buying yarn recently, like over the last six to nine to 12 months. Um, okay. If I'm buying one skein of fingering weight yarn, this I know I can typically use for socks or to use with something else in my stash. Um, for example, if I buy one skein of like a variegated yarn, maybe I'll use this in a color work project. If I buy one skein of a tonal, maybe I will put this together with other tonals um, for either color work or for stripes or something like that. If I buy two skeins of fingering, I know I can use this for an Oslo hat or for a beanie of any kind. Um, one skein of fingering I can probably also use for a hat, maybe like a Musselberg hat, even though I've never made one of those before. Um, but those are the types of projects that I can make with, um, with those yarns. If I buy three skeins of fingering, then I'm looking at like a tank top pattern or like a short sleeve t-shirt pattern. If I buy four, five, or six skeins of fingering, then we're looking at a full sweater. Um, depending on the pattern, like for example, like a love note or a ranunculus, like I can probably get away with four skeins. Um, but a lot of other patterns, I will need five or six skeins. Like for myself. Um, two skeins of DK. I can probably do a beanie, again, maybe socks if it's like merino nylon, um, something like that. And then five to six skeins of DK, I'm looking at a full sweater. So the, this is kind of the pattern that I have put together for myself, and again, like I said, this really depends on a bunch of different factors. So if you are looking to project plan and kind of make a list for yourself, um, here are some of the factors that I think you should take into account. First of all, your personal measurements. When I'm knitting a sweater, I'm typically knitting a size large or a size extra large. 
if you are making a different size, the number of skeins that you need for a sweater is going to be different than the number of skeins that I just listed. While I listed four to five to six skeins of fingering and five to six skeins of DK, you may need less or more depending on your personal measurements. Um, so you will want to figure out how many skeins of a certain type of yarn you would need. Um, do you prefer to make worsted or bulky weight sweaters? If so, how many skeins of worsted or bulky do you typically buy as a sweater quantity and keep note of that number for when you're buying sweater quantities of yarn in the future? Okay. Um, same thing goes for the other factor here, which is what do you like to knit? Um, you see, you just saw that when I listed all of those things, I pretty much prefer to knit garments. Um, hats, maybe socks, but mostly sweaters, tanks, and tees. Um, maybe garments are not what you like to knit most. Maybe you like to knit socks. Maybe you like to knit shawls. Um, you need to figure out what your preferred patterns are and then match that up with the preferred type of yarn that you like to use. Again, figure out for your measurements, how many skeins. Typically, we know that patterns vary, so sometimes you may buy two skeins and sometimes you may buy three skeins for like certain types of patterns, but it all really depends. And that's the type of list that I really think helps when you're, you know, when you see those skeins of yarn, those beautiful colorways that come out and you're like, I know I need this, but I don't know what I want to make with it. Then it's kind of an easier decision at that point where you can say, do I want to make socks or like a one skein project? Do I want to make a shawl or a beanie or, you know, a two to three skein project? Or do I want to make a full sweater? Do I think this will look great in like a tank top or a t-shirt? Or do I think this will look good in like full long sleeve? Those are the type of types of questions that you're going to want to answer for yourself. So that is how I decide to buy yarn before I have a pattern. Now we have the yarn in our stash. How are we going to figure out what type of pattern we want to make with it? Well, there are a few things that I do. You might do these as well. And if you have any additional, please leave them in the comments below so that other people and myself can know what you do to project plan. But I made a list. Um, I am constantly browsing Instagram like <laughs> all day, every day. And whenever I see a photo or a video of a pattern that I really love and I think I might eventually want to make it, I always save it in Instagram. I uh, push the little save button and I always go back and when I am looking for pattern inspiration, I always go through my saved photos to see if there's anything that really jumps out at me. If I really like something that I see on Instagram, I will pretty much immediately go to Ravelry and favorite it. And something that I have done recently is I have created bundles in Ravelry um, for like different types of projects. For example, I have one that's color work, one that's textured sweaters, one that's like summer slash short sleeved sweaters, those types of categories. Um, I think I have one that's cardigans also. I just tried to make these categories of like types of garments that I would want to make or like would want to like save up ideas in these categories for future use. Um, and like when I see a pattern that I really like on Instagram and I go to save it to Ravelry, I've been trying to add it to one of these bundles also. 
Um, and I also frequently go back and search through my Ravelry favorites just to see like, oh yeah, I do really still like these. Or sometimes I will remove them from my favorites if I'm no longer interested in making them. Um, but those are two places where I always like to go back to to search for pattern inspiration. When I'm in Ravelry as well, um, I can always look at how much yardage or what type of yarn is needed for a certain pattern and see if it matches what's in my stash. Okay, so I am going to pick out a couple sweater quantities that I have in my stash that don't have projects and I'm going to show them to you and I'm going to try and see if like on the spot <laughs> um, I can figure out a project to make for these yarns. Um, let's see, I have a couple that I've been like wanting to like figure out projects for for a while. Um, so I'm going to pull those out. three sweater quantities here that I want to show you. The first <laughs> okay this is Silly Goose Yarns can you see that? Hold on e Silly Goose Yarns in the colorway Bubblegum and this is a uh, 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. Um, each skein is 100 grams, 463 yards. And I have six skeins here. So this is a full, well, this is either a full fingering weight sweater um, or I can hold this double for like a DK-ish weight sweater. Um, I've had this for a while and I have not found the perfect project that I would like to make with it. I, I don't know, I feel like I might want something like textured a little bit for this to really make the yarn stand out. Um, I don't think I want something that's just like straight stockinette. At least not a raglan, like maybe a drop sweat, a uh, drop shoulder. I do love drop shoulders. If you've been watching the podcast for a while, you know I'm really into my uh, drop shoulder phase right now. But this yarn is just so bright. Like it is showing up really bright on camera, but it's just as bright in person. Um, it's really hard to hold six skeins. But I would just love to figure out what I want to make with this. And I technically do have a seventh skein, but I bought it at a different time. So it's not quite, not quite the same color. It's definitely a different dye lot. Um, but I do have that available if I needed a little bit more yardage. Um, I could use it for, you know, like the collar and like the cuffs and stuff. Uh, I feel like that if that's like a slightly different shade, then like that's fine. Um, okay. So that's that. I, uh, you know, a full sweater, fingering weight, or maybe DK. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. The second one, the second sweater quantity I have. I don't know if this is gonna like show up on camera. This isn't just white. This is a beautifully variegated light, light pink purple yarn with like speckles of like yellowish orange. And this is from Akara Yarns. Um, it's the colorway hydrangea in her merino sock base, which is an 80-20 superwash merino nylon. This is 115 grams per skein at 420 yards. 
So each skein is like a little bit less compared to like each of these skeins. With three skeins of this, my thought was like a short sleeve something sweater. Um, this I think would be really beautiful for like spring into summer. Um, and so that is my thought for this. Okay. And lastly, Um, lastly, you have seen this yarn if you've watched the pod. Um, this is the Miss Babs, um, Damask Fingering Yarn, which is 65% cultivated silk, 35% bleached linen. And these skeins are 100 grams and 420 yards. Now this yarn is different because it's not superwash merino. Again, it's linen and silk. So this is definitely like a summer yarn. Gonna make like a summer pattern with it. Um, and so since this is like a fingering weight, maybe I can hold two strands together for like some sort of DK tank top or some sort of summer top. Um, I was, you know, I was originally thinking the outline raglan for this. I forgot. Um, but let's, let's do the math and see if I have enough yarn to actually make that. Um, maybe it would need to be short sleeved and maybe we'll need to figure that out. So that's exciting. But, um, yeah, my thought for right now is to move over to the big computer and uh, screen record and show you what I'm thinking and how I look at different patterns and projects for this yarn. Okay, anyways, let's go. Okay, the lighting in here is not 100. <laughs> This angle, I'm not too thrilled about, but it's okay. Um, my computer is like right here, so I'm gonna be like looking back and forth a little bit. Refresher. I'm trying to find projects for these three yarns. Oh, I need to figure out how much of each I have. So, so for this one, I have 400. 20 yards times four skeins is 1680. Handy dandy notebook. Um, okay, 1680 yards of Miss Babs linen silk. Okay. Hot pink bad boy over here. Each skein is 463 yards. I have six skeins. That's 2778 yards. We got a lot to work with there. Hot pink. Okay. And then beautiful Miss Hydrangea here. Again, I'm sorry for this like yellow light. It's four o'clock in the afternoon, which is why that is. Um, but hydrangea, we have 420 yards times three is 1200 or 1260 yards total. Hydrangea. Okay, so I wanna start with, oops. I wanna start with Miss Babs Linen Silk. Um, my thought was to make the outline raglan, um, and I want to see how many yards that takes. So, outline, I'm going to go to Ravelry, and I'm going to look up the pattern. Do, do, do. Okay, um, you probably know some of this. <laughs> I'm probably just repeating things that everybody already knows, but that's okay. We're gonna go for it. So, this is a DK weight pattern. 
and my yarn is in fingering. Um, so I'm gonna take my 1680 yards that I have and I'm gonna divide that by two. That only gives me 840 yards DK. Um, that worries me a little, but we'll see, we'll see, okay. <laughs> Let's look at the size. So I am going to have to make a size large to fit a chest measurement of 40 inches. Um, that makes the garment, the final garment would be 49.5 inches. So I could always go down a size to the size medium because that that final garment measurement is supposed to be 45.5 which would still be five and a half inches of positive ease for me um, this garment is supposed to have a lot like a lot of positive ease you can see it in the photos and I'm sure it says somewhere yeah, this top is designed with seven and a half to nine and a half inches of positive ease. So it's meant to have a lot of positive ease. So let's just like theoretically stick with the size large for now. Let's see how much yarn yardage that would be. So for a full sweater, that's going to be 1,025 yards. So I definitely don't have enough for a full sweater however i could potentially knit this short sleeve um and then i likely would have enough that's you know not quite how it's meant to be i'm looking now at all of the photos that are on here on ravelry Oh, that one's cute. I haven't seen a variegated version yet. Uh, I'm just looking to see if there's anyone who has made a short sleeve. I'm gonna go to projects. There's already 131 of the projects of these, and this came out like relatively recently. That's how you know it's a good pattern, you know? So I'm just going to scroll through really quickly again to see if there are any short sleeves. And I'm really not seeing any. Oh, here's one. Let's see. She made the size extra small. But it is cute with short sleeves. It's really cute. Aro kind of did short sleeves, but she she made the size four, and she used 984 yards. That is the size large, so that's still um, more yardage than what I have. So I'm kind of thinking maybe I won't even have enough for a short sleeve. It is kind of a bummer. Um, one thing I could do is <laughs> see if this exists on the website and see if I can get more. Let's see. I have looked at this web this Miss Babs website once and uh, there was a lot of yarn on here. In stock, six. I can get more. Oh my gosh. Okay. How much would I need? I only need one more skein. Guys. <laughs> I just think this yarn would be so perfect for an outline raglan. Like, one of the big things that is making me think that is the color, this like 
blue that's used in the pattern photo like really reminds me of this blue I think I'm gonna do it I think I'm gonna buy one and like yes I know the color might be different um, but if I'm holding it double like maybe I can use it on like the sleeves especially towards like the end of the sleeves um, and so it won't be quite as noticeable. We're gonna buy it. Okay. Okay, typically I would not just like buy a new skein of yarn for my project plans. This was kind of uh, out of the ordinary. But I do think that this yarn will go really well with that pattern, so I'm really excited about it. So what I'm going to do now, um, I have my crazy, crazy spreadsheet pulled up. I didn't mention this before now, but I have this crazy, crazy spreadsheet that I keep where I write down all of the patterns that I want to make and the yarns that I have for them. If I have like the combo solidified, like the yarn plus pattern solidified, I will write it down on here so that I don't forget because sometimes I forget. <laughs> Um, and I'm just going to put it right at the top, um, outline raglan, I'm going to use the Miss Babs linen silk. Um, you can see, so I'll kind of just give you a rundown of this crazy, crazy <laughs> Excel sheet. Everything in green here. I've already made this year um, so this is pretty exciting I've made 14 things this year and this is like fully finished um, these I gotta make these yellow um, these in yellow these in yellow are my works in progress so these three the champagne cardigan clove sweater Oslo hat are like my current works in progress um, these other four I have started and they are not finished and they are, you know, in whip jail <laughs> because I don't want to work on them right now. Um, these in purple are my like current fall and winter knitting plans that I'm working through. You know, I finished the Oslo sweater and I'm currently working on the champagne cardigan and the clove sweater. So I just kind of put those in here as like these are current plans. And then everything else down here um, is what I have yarn picked out for and the pattern that I want to make for it. Um, when I like finish a project that I'm working on, sometimes I'll come here or like when I'm close to finishing a project, I'll come over here and see like, oh, is there anything I'm like really excited to work on right now? Um, and I'll try to pick a project from this list. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes I end up picking something completely different and completely changing my mind. Um, I have changed like some of these yarns for different projects like multiple times. So all that to say, like if you write it down, it's okay to change your mind. You don't always have to stick to what you've already written down. Okay. I change my mind literally all the time. So <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But okay. We got one picked out. Yay! Okay. I want to look at this one next. This is my hydrangea. 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 Um, I want like a short sleeve something for this. And we have... What is it? 12... 1200... 60 yards so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go to my favorites in Ravelry and I'm gonna look at my spring teas bundle and I'm gonna see if there's something here that maybe I would like to make um, I don't have a ton of projects in here I don't know I'm kind of thinking I like don't want to use this for color work. I feel like if I use this for color work, the like subtlety of the color of this might get like washed out. Um, 
I'm like really like looking for something similar to the salty air tea but I already have yarn picked out for the salty air tea I mean I could always change it again like I said <laughs> Um, let's look at the salty air tea. I just feel like something like this where it's like really really small delicate lace work would be really cute. Let's see. I think one, two, three, five, these. Um, two, three, five, so I'm looking at, this is size four. I think it's between size four and size five. Okay. We're looking at between 850 and 950 yards of fingering weight yarn. So we definitely have enough yarn to make that. So that's an option. Go to the advanced search on Ravelry and I'm gonna start clicking some buttons here so I want knitting I want clothing tops tea and I do know there's a place where you can put in how much yard yeah how much yardage you have um, fingering weight and I have 1260 so 12 to 1500 okay cool let's start looking at these patterns there's a lot here it needs to be something that I can like wear to work wow this is cute this is really cute I don't know when the recording stopped, but um, I think I'm gonna choose this pattern. This is the Ginkgo Fight pattern by Emily Green. It was in um, the Pom Pom Magazine Spring 2019. Um, I was not knitting in Spring 2019, so I've never seen this before. Maybe you've seen it, but I have enough yarn that I could like make the three-quarter sleeve or I could make the short sleeve. I'm not like super into the reverse stockinette, but like from far away, this top is gorgeous. Um, so I might see if I can just do regular stockinette or maybe I'll decide that I like it at some point. But I'm going to add this to the list. I think I have made a decision. So uh, this is going to be the Ginkgo... <laughs> Ginkgo... Go fight tea with the Akara yarns. I change ya. Yay! Okay. The last yarn that we want to look at is our hot pink favorite. Um, so as a reminder, we have like 2,700 yards of this. Yeah, 2,778 what is that divided by two that's 13 1389 yards if we wanted to do something dk okay that's important to keep in mind that's still like a decent amount that is a decent amount of dk yards um the only thing is i'm not sure if that'll be enough for something textured so I'm gonna go back to my favorites. I'm gonna go to, I have a texture bundle. Oh, do you know it would be so cute in this? DK. This is the August Sweater by Johanna Gerich. Gerich? Um, she's on Instagram at Calibri by jo Johanna. And this cable sweater is super cute. It's like cropped. It's made in DK weight. She does um, she does a fingering plus mohair, but I could hold this double. Let's see. This pattern, oh, unfortunately, is like not super size inclusive. She only has it in three sizes, an extra small slash small, a medium slash large, and an extra large slash XXL. So I'm definitely in like the medium slash large range. I can make the medium or the large. 
I don't know if this is one size, like medium slash large, or if this is, if there are actually two separate sizes here. Mm. Okay, so apparently there's a part in the pattern that talks about how to get more positive ease by casting on extra stitches at the underarms. For the loose look, because I'm on the inside of it. So that's probably that's probably how like there's like two sizes to each size <laughs> because of that. Well, this is an option. Okay, this is definitely an option. So I'm gonna go back to my bundles. Let's see. The Cornwall cable raglan is knit in worsted. Ugh. The Ingrid sweater. I would love to make the Ingrid sweater. I don't think I want to make it in hot pink. This is also in worsted. I think I'd like to make it in cream. Ayasta mohair is obviously in mohair. The sweater number 20 I think is also in, yeah, Aran weight yarn. Sweater number 18 is Aran weight yarn. I already knit sweater number 15. Long honey. Okay. So, no, I'm not super into that. I don't know, sometimes sometimes project planning just like takes some time. Sometimes you, you know, might be really trying to find something um, and you don't like anything that you see. Um, I like am really not liking a lot of what I'm seeing right now for this yarn. So sometimes you just need to put it away and wait for the pattern to find you. Um, I'm sure I will be scrolling on Instagram and something will pop out and I'll be like, that's the pattern that I want to make. That's what I'm gonna use this yarn for. So I'm going to end it here. Um, I hope you've um, enjoyed <laughs> the polar bear in the background. Um, as well as my Aloha Desert Donna macrame uh, link in the description for the Etsy shop if you are looking for any macrame. But I hope you enjoyed this episode, something a little bit different. Um, I, I do get those questions a lot and I see, um, I see other, you know, like yarn dyers get asked these questions a lot as well of like, how do you actually buy yarn if you don't know what project you're going to make for it. Um, so I really hope this helped and gave you a little bit of an idea what I do and now hopefully you can go do something similar. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope you get some knitting time in. Um, if you're not already subscribed, I am trying to reach uh, 1,000 subscribers. Hit that milestone. I'm trying to reach that by the end of the year, so it would really mean a lot to me if you could hit that subscribe button. Um, if you want to leave a comment talking about how you like to project plan, if there's anything a little bit different than what I have shown here, I would love to hear how you do it. And I think others might love that as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!